So I'm on my way to Latour's Auto, and uh, what you guys don't know is I was already there today, and I was filming for about 45 minutes or so on this airbag problem on this 2008 Chevy Tahoe, which I'm going back to look at. You know, the whole time that, that I'm troubleshooting this thing, uh, there's concerns along the way of the sensors that I'm testing and why it doesn't match the wiring diagram, and it's ridiculous that uh, the whole time I was testing this circuit, I, I believe I'm messing around with some outside air temp sensors. Now, I don't know why there's two of them on this system, and that is not my concern right now. So anyway, I was messing around with temp sensors and thought they were the airbag sensors, and they were not, and yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. You guys won't see any of that footage. Uh, what I did mention at the end of that video as we were getting ready to call a bad airbag module, is um, I mentioned that uh, I wanted you guys to jump in on the forum and and um, you know contribute and tell me where I went wrong and maybe what I missed and and I was you know promoting my website and my forum for that and I want to do that for you guys now. Uh, a lot of you don't know that I created a forum to help you guys more. Um, I have about 80,000 of you guys following me now and uh, to keep up with all the questions I just can't anymore and so I created a forum on my website it is uh, scannerdanner.com you guys can go over and sign up for the forum and we can share pictures and we can uh, uh, you know share diagrams and you know things like that but yeah go go over on the forum and and check it out guys this video we can talk about it there as well and uh, I'm going to go back inside and let's do hopefully a real quick diagnosis on some airbag, front airbag sensor faults on a 2008 Chevy Tahoe. Okay guys, when I was here earlier today and last time that I looked at this briefly, um, I was focused on the sensors that are down in this area because it says on the rad core support on the wiring diagram, so I was looking at that sensor and that sensor there, they're both on the core support. I did not think they were temperature sensors at the time. Uh, I do now. One of them uh, actually maintains the reference or signal voltage with the key off and the other one does not. And the funny thing about it is the side that was not reacting properly, at least I thought, was the same side that we have the code for. Uh, the other thing is the wiring was the same. I have a yellow wire on the driver's side and I have a uh, dark green wire on the passenger side and that matched my diagram for my front impact sensors but the opposite wire did not and here's the thing guys when your wiring diagram doesn't match the components on the car either you have the wrong diagram or you have the wrong components lesson learned for me those are not the airbag sensors let me show you where they are they are on the rad core support there's one right there and there's one right there and this is after taking the lower cover off so I am underneath the vehicle now and these colors match look there's a dark green and look I don't forget what the other color is but dark green and yellow man did that throw me off uh, but these are the sensors. The, the fault that is setting is for the right side, I believe, which would be this one. And uh, let's, uh, now that we're on the correct part, let's do a quick diagnosis on this. I think the easiest way to do this right now, uh, a, a low-tech method, is to swap, swap the two front sensors and see if our fault code moves with the sensor. And uh, I think that's the first thing I'm going to do. Alright, so for this connector, I just I used my pocket screwdriver, went in and pushed up on this as I pulled it. And uh, these are bolted to the lower rad core support. I'm just going to swap the two sensors. We'll see if that code moved. It was a, P0, or a B0084. Hey, it is the, the Milwaukee ratchet. This is Pete's. So we'll compare it to my, to my snap-on. Oh, I can't get it in there, Pete. P0084. 
Petey. I need a um, extension and a. You have a swivel, swivel socket. Swivel ten. Swivel ten. Yeah, with a. Give me a six-inch extension. This is a little bit lower profile uh, ratchet than my snap-on one. Lower profile meaning like shorter. Yeah. How do you like this Milwaukee one, Pete? Yeah, I like it. I mean, do I you have a snap on three eighths? I like that one. Too. Do you like the snap on three eighths more than the Milwaukee three eighths, or? I don't have a Milwaukee. Oh, so you just have a Milwaukee quarter inch and a snap on three eighths. Right. So this light stays on on the Milwaukee, or is there a switch for it? No, when you hit the button it comes on. Oh, it's delayed. Yeah. That's kind of nice. Alright, so I don't think these sensors guys need to be grounded for this test. Um, of course they need to be whenever, you know, they're in operation, they just need to be part of the frame. I'm just going to plug them in. Just switching them side to side without bolting them back up. We'll go up top and we'll reread our fault codes. That's going to be the beginning of our diagnosis on these two sensors. So I'm just going to leave them hang. Right, let's go back up top. All right, uh, just real quick, you can see the front end sensor too. This is the code that was here before. Uh, it's a B0084 front end sensor two, which should have been the right side from the uh, research that I did previous. Um, and it should now set for the other side. So I'm gonna turn the key back on, let's reread these. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna go back. Go current codes, nice. So we now are setting a B0083, a front end sensor one fault. Are you starting that, Pete? What are you doing? Okay, good, all right. So if all you had, guys, listen, if all you had was a um, less expensive scan tool and nothing else, this is all you need to do. Uh, Pete, you need to order a front end sensor for this. When I swap them end to end, uh, the code moved to the other side. So our wiring, computer, everything's fine. Um, don't troubleshoot outside air temp sensors and think that they're airbag sensors. That's the lesson here. Um, we'll get a signal on this just because some of you are curious as to what it would look like. And um, what I'll do is I'll try to piece together maybe some of this video, what I shot before as far as the, the fault code goes, the enabling criteria, how the sensor works. I'll include that from my footage from before and then we'll pick it right back up here in a second. So moving over to my footage before so you guys have info on the sensor and then uh, this is a 2008 Pete and then uh, we'll come back here. Let's get some good stuff here. Inflatable restraint front end sensor ut utilizes a unidirectional two wire circuit. The front end sensor modu modulates current on the interface to send ID state of health and deployment commands to the inflatable restraint sensing and diagnostic module, the SDM. The SDM serves as a power source and a ground for the front end sensor. When the ignition is turned on and the input power from the SDM is first detected, the front end sensor responds by performing internal diagnostics. What? and sending an ID to the SDM. The SDM considers the ID to be valid if the response time is less than five seconds. So this is not just some simple little two-wire sensor here. Front-end sensor continually communicates status messages to the SDM which determines if a fault is present in the front-end uh, sensor circuit. When a fault is detected, the SDM may reset the front-end sensor up to two times by removing and reapplying power to it. Wow. If it if the fault is still present, the SDM will set a DTC. Okay, so running conditions for setting the DTC says uh, ignition voltage is between 9 and 16. Zero, zero fault says the sensor signal circuit is shorted to voltage, shorted to ground, or has an open or high resistance. The sensor low reference circuit is open. Low reference is generally a ground. 
not generally. Every time I've seen low reference, that is a, a ground circuit. Uh, the front end sensor current has been above 23 milliamps for more than five, longer than five milliseconds. Interesting stuff. This is just from a, a Google search I did on this B0084. Uh, I didn't really go go deep into it, but I was just rereading what the code means and how it operates. I'll say it again. It says uh, it utilizes a unidirectional two-wire circuit. The front end sensor modulates current on the interface to send ID, state of health, and deployment commands to the inflatable restraint sensing diagnostic module, the SDM. So that is the computer for this system. The SDM serves as a power source and ground for the front end sensor. When the ignition is turned on and input power from the SDM is first detected, the front end sensor responds by performing internal diagnostics. So, see, I'm not seeing any of that. I'm, I'm certainly not seeing a power source. I mean, unless the power source is 5 volts, because it says as a power source and ground. Front end sensor continuously communicates status message. If a fault's detected, the SDM may reset the front end sensor up to two times by removing and reapplying power to it. All right, so you guys saw some of that. Hopefully that turned out okay. The um, operation of the sensor, of course, checking it before. I was checking the wrong sensors. This time I swapped the two. We had a B0084, which now moved to 83. The info that we had, the 84 code was the right sensor, which is the passenger side so now my faulty sensor is on the driver's side let's confirm that I'm going to unplug the driver's side sensor now which should be one and nothing should change so that's what I'm going to do driver's side well, display our codes yep. yeah well, so uh, the B0083 so you guys know is the driver's side this was on the passenger side setting an 84 fault code um, I moved it to the driver's side it moved with it looks like it's a sensor is it cracked it is cracked the sensor's cracked let me show it to you. No. Right, right, right in there, you see the crack. Paul, it says you need both at the same time. I, I think I'd, I was just going to say, given that this is cracked like this, Pete, I would change them both. Is that what they're telling you to do? Change them both. The sensor's cracked, Pete. The sensor's cracked. I think we should change them both, absolutely. Look at that. Look, Pete, come here. Under the sticker. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Let's look at the known good side. Although, I want to show you guys some voltage readings. You know, because some of us are curious about that. We'll look at the driver's side, the, or a passenger side now that's the working one. See what they look like. All right, guys. Uh, this, this test... Uh, I'm not um, sure what we're going to see, but what I'm what I'm going to do is go between the two pins, and um, we're going to get a lab scope reading of this. It, it mentions in the flow chart that it uses uh, it monitors current flow and sends different signals back to the SDM, and it's a pretty elaborate sensor. And uh, what we want to look at. Let you guys see on the lab scope. I, I'm anticipating some type of square wave communication signal. Um, showing 8.22 volts right now. Hey Pete, can you cycle the key off and then uh, wait five seconds and turn the key back on for me? Yep. Hold on, Pete. Turn the key off. Okay, turn the key back on. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome.
not a whole lot of activity there. We had some signals in here. See, like riding over top of this. I'm not really sure. Looks like a a packet, if you want to call it, of signals on this sensor. I'm not sure you could use that for a diagnosis. Hey Pete. Yeah. Hand me that bad sensor. I want to see what that one looks like on the same key on test that we just did. Just curious. Yeah. You can set it down. Thank you. Alright guys, this is the bad sensor. Let's get some comparison numbers here. That's 8.21 volts steady and then we have some changes in that signal there. Again, I think it's current flow that would be the more accurate view of this. Um, Pete, yeah. can you uh, turn the key off and then wait five seconds and turn the key back on? We got zero all the time. Got to turn the key back on. We got nothing, no activity. Oh, well, there was a signal there. Hold on, what'd that look like? There is your, in the description of the uh, flowchart, it says the computer will try to wake up this sensor um, two times by applying a power to it. And that's exactly what we're seeing right there. That's kind of cool. Um, some type of a wake up turn on type signal and then you saw afterward that it just basically went back to zero volts if I unfreeze that you see right now we're at zero on that circuit it's almost like the computer shut it off maybe from a short just curious on what that reads unplugged and yes I do have the key on are there any concerns uh, with the key on doing this kind of testing I think that it's probably not uh, recommended by the manufacturer if you want to call it but there's a lot of other data that you need for airbag deployment and we don't have any of that so I'm not worried about it um, key is on right now Pete one more time can you turn the key off and and then back on for me Let's see if we just see the same result wait five seconds and then turn it back on Yeah. Okay. We can see that activity. Let's stop it and zoom. That's crazy. It's totally different. Let me change my time base. I'm going to do that one more time. Uh, I want you to do that for me one more time, Pete, but let me change my time base again. I'm going to go one second. Got okay, key off and then wait five and turn the key back on. This is unplugged, the working circuit. So the idea here, guys, the reason I'm doing this is what if you only had one front sensor? Go ahead, when you're ready, Pete. If you only had one front sensor to work with, would you have enough information wiring wise to make a call on a sensor and that's the whole point of this let's uh, stop that and zoom we saw exactly what the flowchart said which is two times the computer will try to wake this sensor up it, it's definitely reacting differently with the sensor unplugged we can see a, a uh, longer period of time that we are at um, this number what number is this let's get you guys a number um, 8.5 volts up in here around 8 volts and uh, time frame wise that's 1 point oh, we can put cursors in there let's see how long of a period of time so the initial turn on of this turn off is uh Time, delta time 4.5 seconds 4.5 seconds for that one zoom out see what this one this is about the same 
So it looks about four and a half seconds long. We get this eight volt turn on signal where it's trying to wake this sensor up. That's according to the flow tort. And this will be with set a known good sensor plugged in. Or, or is this the bad one? No, this is the bad one. One more time. Hey, Pete. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing back there? Oh, sorry, Fred. Can you cycle this key off and on for me? Would you mind? No. Or, okay, cool. Turn it off. We, yeah, turn the key off and wait five seconds and turn the key back on. And this is the bad sensor, guys. Yep. This is on a one second time base this time. Go ahead, turn the key back on. Okay. Yep. Totally different looking. Totally different. Look at the difference in the time frame of it turning the sensor on and off. Very, very small periods of time. Um, and there is almost some activity there. Give me one second, Fred, and I'm going to um, do this one more time with the, with the good sensor. Okay. Time. Looks like delta time about a half a second for that one and less on the second one over here. So there's, it's doing circuit integrity testing, and it's probably measuring current. It's recognizing a short it's only waking that sensor up uh, for a smaller period of time. Definitely uh, current flow related in my opinion. That was the bad sensor and we're going to put the good one back in one more time. This is good sensor. Now turn the uh, key off. Okay. And go ahead and turn the key on. Key on? Yep. This is the good sensor. See how it's staying up there. That voltage, it likes what it saw. It's keeping the voltage up there. Let's pause that. Zoom on that. And we see some activity in, in here. And I'm pretty sure, guys, if we did current measurements here, we could see some type of, uh, some type of activity. But it's interesting how it maintains this circuit. You see the voltage is being maintained at 8.2 volts all the time. Turn the key off for me please. No problem. Key back on. Yeah, I can't see those signals here guys like I saw originally. It'll be over in this area, right here. Hello? I believe what you're looking. Okay, there it is. What you're looking at in here would be activity. So this area in here, where you see this hash, and in here, here, and here, these would be packets of information that uh, the computer's looking at. And I'm pretty sure, guys, it's current flow because that's what the fault code said uh, as far as the the operation of the sensor. Is it's a it varies current flow. That's what you're looking at in there. This would be a working sensor, guys. Uh, hopefully that helps one of you. Uh, again, uh, the basics behind this would be if you got two of them, swap it, swap them and see if they move with the sensor. But if you only had one sensor, I think it helps to see uh, this type of stuff. So that's it. We're done. It is actually getting both sensors. I'll show you guys one more time. Even this good one. Yeah, you can turn the key off. Even the good one, guys. Is, is cracked. The one that's functioning and working is cracked. Take this. We are getting both, right, Pete? Yeah. First, he throws a spider on me, which I'm done with that spider. Then he blows up a coolant bottle. My ears are still ringing. Thanks, Pete. You see the even the, the quote good sensor um, has a crack in it. Hopefully the camera's showing that crack right there. Not as bad as the other one, but 
I was reading on, on online that these only last a couple years. We can see why the cracks in these sensors. Um, how much were these, Pete? Just curious. Maybe it depends on which there were two different ones. The bigger ones were like 84 bucks. $84 a piece isn't, isn't as much as I thought it was going to be, but that works. Faulty front, uh, do we call these impact sensors? I guess so. Faulty front sensor. 2008 Chevy Tahoe. 